Howdy. Today what we're going to talk about is the introduction. I'm going to introduce vectors right now. And uh, vectors, if you're taking a calculus and a physics class at the same time, you're probably doing vectors at the same time. Um, and vectors are obviously the same whether you're in math or in physics. However, the way that you utilize and the way that the questions are going to be asked whether you're in math or physics is going to be slightly different. So let's talk about vectors mathematically. Okay, This is going to be the way that vectors are going to be asked in your calculus class. And if you need vectors for your physics class, we're going to have a video for that too, so check that out. Um, but for this video, this is going to be vectors for your calculus class. Okay. So, introducing vectors, the big question that I get is, well, what is a vector, okay? And simply put, a vector is something that gives you both magnitude and direction, okay? And in this course, if you're doing count one, um, this is gonna, we're going to be dealing with two-dimensional vectors, okay? Now, what is a vector? Well, check this real quick. If I said, is it just a change in x and change in y, okay? And let's say I have the vector v which is going to be, um, we'll call it 1, 2, okay? What this means is I'm going 1 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. But here's the thing, a vector isn't a point. I can move this vector around however, however I want. If I pick this vector up and moved it here, this is still the vector 1, 2. This is still the vector 1, 2. No matter where I put it, okay, as long as my change in x is 1, and my change in y is 2, this is my vector v12, okay? So, let's talk about how to find a vector from one point to another, okay? And what I always think about whenever doing a problem like this is I think tip minus tail, okay? I'm thinking tip minus tail, right? So, if I want to find the vector from the point a to 1 to the, to the point b512, well, the vector a, b... Notice how my tip is at B and my tail is at A. And so what I'm going to do for my X component, okay, for my X component, I'm going to do tip minus tail. So I'm going to go 5 minus the X of A, which is 2. And then doing the Y, I'm going to go 12 minus and then the Y of A, which is 1. And so what this becomes, this becomes a vector 3, 11. Now, a lot of professors will write vectors in brackets, or they may write it like this. They may write it as 3i plus 11j. This is the same thing. This is like me saying tomato, and this is like you saying tomato. Okay, it's, it's literally going to be the same thing, so don't let that freak you out. Me, personally, I actually like putting it in brackets, because when we get to vector algebra, it's a little bit easier algebraically to mess with stuff in brackets. But that's just my personal preference. It does not matter. 311 and 3i plus 11j are the exact same thing. Okay? Now, what is the magnitude of a vector? Okay? The magnitude of a vector, this is the length, okay? If I want to find the magnitude of a vector, it gives me the length of a vector. And so, arbitrarily, the way that we're going to find this is, if I have some vector, we'll call it v, and I have an x, y, some arbitrary x and y, what that tells me, okay, what that tells me is it's, got, it's moved some distance in the x direction and some distance in the y direction. And what I want to do is I want to find the length of this. And notice how this would create a right triangle. So how do you think we're going to find the magnitude or the length of this vector? Well, all you would do if you want to find the magnitude of V, okay, this is just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. And this is coming from Pythagorean theorem because what, we, what it creates is technically a right triangle. We'll talk more about vector algebra in just a sec in the next video, but in the meantime, let's make sure we understand and have a foundation of what vectors are before we start doing some vector algebra. Finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is um, how to find the components of your vector if you're given a magnitude, which we just talked about as our length, at some angle, okay? Don't remember Sokotoa, or don't, <laughs> don't remember, definitely remember, don't forget Sokotoa. And what that meant, if you remember, was sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta, the ka, is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally, tangent theta 
is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? And so definitely don't um, forget that, okay? So how are we going to find the x and the y components of my vectors given a length and given an angle? Well, what we can do is my vector a. Let's take a look at the x component of a. Notice how the x component of this vector is adjacent to my angle 30 and it's in the positive direction because it is adjacent to my angle, okay? Um, I'm going to be using cosine. So this is going to be 10 cosine of 30 degrees. And then the y component of this vector is opposite my angle. And because it's opposite my angle, I'm going to be using my sine. I'm given an opposite. I'm looking for my opposite and I'm given my hypotenuse. Therefore, um, I'm going to be using 10 sine of 30 degrees. And if you're comfortable with the unit circle, we know that cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, right? So 10 times square root of 3 over 2 is just going to be 5 square root of 3. And then sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And so 10 times 1 half is 5. And so the components of this vector would be 5 root 3, comma 5. Or you can write it as 5 root 3i, plus 5j. Either way, same thing. But let's take a look at this one. All right, let's take a look at this. Now what I've got is the, um, trying to make this a straight line, the magnitude of b is 15, but notice where my angle is. Notice how my angle 30 degrees is now at a different location, okay? So, let's find our components of b. Let's find our x components. Well, my x component, notice how it's opposite my angle this time. The x component of this vector is opposite my angle. Not only is it opposite, but it's negative. And so what you need to do, because it's going in the negative x direction, this is going to be a negative 15. And because it's opposite my angle, I'm going to be using sine, sine of 30 degrees. Okay, And then my y component, the y component of this vector, notice how what I'm doing is I'm creating a right triangle just like we talked about here with the magnitude. We're creating the right triangle. And the y component of this right triangle, of this vector, is adjacent to my angle, but it's still positive, okay? So it's going in the positive y direction, so I'm going to keep it a positive 15, okay? But it's adjacent. And adjacent means that I'm going to use cosine, so cosine of 30 degrees. And we know what both of these are. We know sine of 30 degrees is going to be 1 half. And so negative 15 times 1 half is a negative 7.5 or 15 over 2, however you want to do it. And then 15 times a cosine of 30 degrees. We know cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And so 15 times root 3 over 2, we can write it as just positive 7.5 times square root of 3. Join us in the next video and we'll start dealing with vector algebra.